What's up guys, Peter here from Reviews on Anything and in this video we're having a look at the Nike Air Zoom Pegasus 32 running shoe which is uh, part of the um, competitor pack 2015 um, just like an earlier video where we looked at the Elite 8 uh, this is a very similar shoe from the same pack uh, that actually features a lot of the same uh, technologies and benefits and structure as the Elite 8 but it's more of an entry level shoe, uh, it's a bit cheaper uh, has a few features less, uh, but it's a shoe that you'll instantly feel familiar with and will get you going uh, pretty much from the get-go. So we're going to take a closer look, it's a little bit dirty as you can see from trying it out, uh, but we're going to look at it and see what's what. Alright, so here we are with the Nike Air Zoom Pegasus 32 running shoes. Uh, now like I said before, these are part of the Fall 2015 competitor pack, which according to Nike, and I quote here, is a collection of ultra responsive, ultra quick zoom footwear styles inspired by the fastest athletes in the world. Well, that's a whole mouthful and I'm sure that's all true, but it's a bit of a marketing thing, I think. Um, also, like I said before, the Elite 8 Nike Air Zoom shoes that we looked at in an earlier video are part of that line too. Uh, and these shoes uh, share a lot of similarities, uh, but this is more of an entry uh, into the running shoe, into the zoom shoes, uh, it's a bit cheaper and feature has a few less uh, features. Um, the most important feature that is uh, quote unquote missing here is uh, that the uh, Elite 8 is very focused on lightweightness. Uh, not that these shoes are heavy but they're a bit less lightweight than the Elite 8s. Anyway, let's put one to the side and let's focus on this one. Uh, it is dirty, yes, uh, you know, before you start commenting. Uh, obviously I had to try it out so uh, the shoe got dirty. There you go. Now, um, first of all, let's start on the bottom. It features the same sort of rail on the outside uh, as the Zoom 8, which uh, makes for very smooth transitions. Uh, and I actually found when uh, running on these, uh, it almost forces your foot into a position where you use the outside of your foot to transition out of your step, um, which can be considered both a good thing and a bad thing. Uh, you know, if you really uh, focusing on your technique and you have trouble keeping the weight on the outside of your foot uh, This shoe really helps in making sure that you uh, move that way uh, On the other hand if uh, that's not something you want uh, it could hurt your feet quite a bit um, If you have a different kind of running style uh, That doesn't you know support this kind of transition then obviously you need to look for a different shoe uh, But it's uh, I actually found it quite nice uh, that your foot is uh, not you know slightly pushed in that direction Which is kind of cool uh, and with the traction here on the inner part, you still have uh, a good push with, your, with the front of your foot, which is quite nice, especially when you're running uh, like in a forest or on a trail. Uh, I find that quite helpful. Now you can see that this is the uh, blue with orange version with the green inside, uh, but obviously there's a whole uh, range of colors available to suit your, uh, I suppose, custom Nike outfit. Um, next feature is the lacing. As you can see, these are just little ropes, uh, little pieces of string rather than the traditional sort of loops here on the top. And even the actual loops are, um, you know, have the string around it. It still goes through the actual fabric of the shoe. Um, so it was a slight concern um, with the Zoom, with the Elite 8s as well. Same with this, that this will wear because obviously you're, you can imagine that your shoelaces are tugging and moving about and since this is just string in the end and there's no loop uh, that might you know wear out over time and break and you can imagine as soon as one breaks uh, that's uh, could be a potential disaster but since it still goes through the fabric um, it doesn't make much of a difference I think uh, which on the other hand makes you question the whole point of this lacing since it pulls you know since the the, the shoe lace actually goes through the fabric right here uh, what's the point of having these uh, strings here uh, but it does you know tie around your foot quite nicely um, something I said in the introduction as well is this is a shoe as soon as you put it on it feels familiar you're like oh nice it's a shoe that you're very very easily comfortable with uh, I had it from the moment I put them on uh, your feet feel right at home in the shoe um, there's no weird pressure there's no uh, you know uncomfortable fit it's just you, you put your foot in and you're like, ah, yes, great, let's go. Uh, so it's a very accessible shoe, I think, uh, that you can just grab, uh, get straight out of the box, put them on and start running. Uh, obviously, you have to get used you know, to the specifics of the shoe, the sole, the dampening and so on. 
Um, but it's, uh, yeah, the comfortable uh, feel and sort of the, the familiar at home feel uh, was something that stood out for me right away, which is uh, quite nice. Because uh, it can be hard to find good uh, running shoes and you know, uh, the more professional you get, I'm not a professional runner by any, any standard. Uh, but I like shoes that feel good from the get-go. Uh, you know, some shoes like, oh, you have to break them in, you have to run for 15 weeks uh, before they really start working for you, blah, blah, blah. I think that's, uh, you know, not necessary, especially not at an amateur level. Uh, and these shoes are real sort of out of the box and get going, uh, which I really like. Now, the upper part here has breathable support according to Nike. It is an engineered mesh upper part that provides ventilation and support where you need it most. Uh, so that's uh, great. Uh, it just means that you uh, get a bit of ventilation here and your feet won't overheat as quick, which is a good thing too. Other than that, uh, the heel cupping part is nice and um, uh, stable and secure. Uh, this is actually pretty uh, rigid, uh, so your heel feels you know, very locked down uh, and you can see even here the top part if you push down on it there's not much give in it uh, which means that your heel sits nice and secure and when you get the right size shoe which obviously you should uh, your whole foot feels nice and solid uh, that said the heel is nice and tight but you still have space in the front to wiggle your toes around a bit because uh, that could be a potential problem with uh, running shoes that are slightly too tight uh, that over longer distances your uh, toes start to get numb or lose blood, especially when you have your laces a bit uh, tighter. Uh, not the case here. Uh, you can put the laces I mean, too tight, obviously, but if you, if you put the laces right, your heel is nice and secure, you got good support here in the uh, sort of midfoot area, and you still have plenty of space to wiggle your toes around and to get uh, good traction uh, sort of off the ground, off your step, which is great. A uh, few more things that you need to know about this shoe is the cushion foam midsole that provides a soft and springy yet responsive cushioning, uh, which is a lot of uh, blah blah as well. Um, you know, they're not too springy, I find. Uh, you don't get too much of a bounce out of them, uh, especially not when you're running on a sort of a softer um, surface, uh, like a trail or a forest. Uh, it's a little bit more when you're running on concrete or uh, maybe on um, a running track. Uh, you get a bit of bounce out of the shoe, but in general, it's a it's a pretty stable and a pretty neutral shoe um, when it comes to you know bounciness and springiness. You can see uh, thanks to the uh, sort of wedge shape that actually also contributes to a proper transition uh, aided with the rails here on the side that we talked about before. That's really all there is to see uh, to and from the shoe. Personally, I kind of like uh, the design. It's not uh, you know too screaming. Obviously, you know the color uh, is. Uh, but there's just the Nike logo here, nothing on the back, and uh, a bit of logo here on the uh, tongue of the shoe, and that's it. So it's nothing too uh, shouting like, oh, look at me with my Nikes, uh, which I kind of like. It's uh, a little bit understated. If you get them in a you know, less uh, shouty color, uh, it's a nice and sort of uh, you know, understated running shoe, which I kind of like. Uh, as far as the lacing goes, I don't really feel like it contributes anything really to the tightness. Um, uh, and sort of the, the grip it has around your midfoot. I find normal laces uh, working just fine. Um, so, you know, for me, that doesn't really contribute anything. Uh, but I suppose it's a feature that you can, uh, you know, love or hate. Uh, all in all, I found the shoe, like I said, uh, very comfortable from the get-go, very accessible. Uh, and I think for your average runner, uh, you know, if you're professional, you might want to look for something more specialized with a Custom footbed maybe, and uh, maybe then even the Elite 8s uh, that are a bit more lightweight are quite, uh, are more suitable for you. But I think for your average amateur runner that runs, uh, you know, two or three times a week, or somebody that just wants to get into running, I think this is a perfect shoe that you can just uh, pick up without too much trouble and uh, enjoy quite fast and quite for a long time if you take reasonable care of, you, of them. This is Peter from Reviews on Anything with a look at the Nike Air Zoom Pegasus 32. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I'll link the video to the Zoom Elite 8s, obviously, as well, and hope to catch you guys in the next one. Cheers!